All righty. Thank you, sir. Appreciate it. And good morning, good afternoon, good evening, evening everybody. Uh, Steve Pierce, like I am, a product manager on the SharePoint Embedded team. And what we're going to do today is walk through a bit of an overview of SharePoint Embedded. So if you're not familiar with SharePoint Embedded, we'll give you the nickel tour on uh, what a container is, what files are, where we see uh, valid use cases uh, to use that. Then we're going to move into a demo on a Power Platform solution that I put together. As you can imagine, demoing an API is not very sexy. So this is where we put together a quick um, tutorial on what it looks like from a uh, presentation perspective, but also using that as a starter kit to get going with your own uh, Power Platform uh, solution. All right. For those of you that are not familiar with SharePoint Embedded, SharePoint Embedded is an API only headless SharePoint. So think of a single site collection with a single document library uh, that makes up those containers that hold files. Uh, the use case that we normally see is if you're creating a Power Platform app and you're hooking it up to a document library, somebody comes into your document library, starts messing with the metadata, starts deleting files because they have access to that uh, interface, your app breaks. And that obviously is not a good thing. Uh, so what we're doing is we're removing that UI portion. It's a bring your UI uh, scenario here and uh, allowing you to interact with the graph components to do what you want to within your application, control the user experience. But if you're storing documents as part of that user experience, nobody wants to create a document management system because SharePoint is fantastic at doing that. Let's use that uh, goodness within our custom application. So that's where we have the ability to have um, all the document management capabilities, uh, co-authoring, uh, version control, uh, permissions. We've got the ability to have Copilot integrated within that SharePoint embedded experience, um, purview integration, all the goodness that you're, you're expecting in that M365 environment. Uh, you're going to get within that SharePoint embedded uh, environment. Okay. Overview of some of the features that we normally see. Again, from a content AI perspective, uh, yes, we do have OCR on images, much like uh, same thing that you would have within a syntax environment in a document library. All the purview integration, so sensitivity labels, retention policies, use it for e-discovery, audit logging, all that good stuff. Collaboration is the probably the best number one feature that we see customers requesting is when you are in your custom application and you want to co-author, you want to at mention somebody within the graph endpoint, we'll show you exactly what that looks like. Simply drop that in as a hyperlink into your application. It launches the Office experience and you're doing Office uh, uh, experience there. Nothing that needs to be done on the developer perspective to enable that. And then from a storage perspective, again, because you can have up to 25 million documents in a container, create as many containers as you need to to support your application, tens, thousands, hundreds of thousands, that's fine. Uh, we get all of that redundancy and throughput within the SharePoint embedded environment. All right, so I'm gonna quickly move to a bit of plumbing on what it takes to create an environment, and then we are going to uh, go into that environment. First thing that you need to do to get started with SharePoint Embedded is that app registration in Azure. Go and create a typical app registration. That allows you to assign the graph API permissions that you need to access the files, control permissions into that container. That also allows you to get that bearer token. This is gonna be pretty big here in a second as we authenticate into those graph APIs, get those responses so that we can use it within our application. Once you have that, now you're in business of managing containers within the SharePoint embedded environment. Again, that container where you hold your files. Uh, think of it as a document library, very synonymous with that. But you can have uh, a, more than 100,000 containers if you need to, each container holding that 25 million documents to support your application. And then everything is based on those graph API calls that we're going to see here in just a second and uh, built on all of the governance and configuration that you have in your tenant today. So if you've got MFA conditional access set up, great. SharePoint Embedded is going to respect that. 
apply that business logic, and oh, by the way, let's include some governance there so that we can make sure that everything is compliant uh, within your environment. All right, so I am going to jump out of the deck. We are going to get into what does this stuff look like. And first thing I'm going to do is walk through an overview of what the Power Platform app does. And then we're going to back into the plumbing on how things come together. So as I mentioned, demoing an API, not very sexy. But if we start to use the Power Platform and the graph endpoints, to surface not only the containers that we have in our environment, but also what are the operations that we're going to do on those containers. And this is going to be normal activity that you would do when you're creating your own custom application to do whatever it is uh, you need to do. You need to create containers. Create a container, give it a name, who's going to own the container. That gets created and you'll be able to see that in the SharePoint Admin Center. Deleting a container does what you think it does, puts it back in the recycle bin for 93 days. Again, in the SharePoint Admin Center, bring it back if you made a mistake uh, and need to uh, uh, put that back into production. Manage permission. Container properties. So think of container properties as the property bag within a site collection. Okay, So this is where you can assign a specific property to that uh, container and now use that as a managed property to search on it uh, later on. So that, that's pretty slick. If you've ever worked with a site property or bag to try and manage some chargebacks or um, organize your site collections, SharePoint Embedded has that uh, figured out. All right, moving on to files. So the heart and soul of the SharePoint Embedded environment, adding, uh, deleting all of the CRUD operations that you would imagine with files, organize those as you see fit. So if you need to upload a file, upload a file. Um, if you need to switch containers, because now I've got the number of projects that I'm managing in this case, each project has its own set of documents. Fantastic, manage the permission, share out this document with somebody internally or externally so that they can collaborate on that with you. Full support for that as well. You'll notice that I'm simply clicking on that file. It's opening it in the Office Web Experience. That's it. There's no plumbing that needs to happen from a developer configuration perspective. That is just going to happen for free. And I will show you exactly how that happens for free here in just a second. Okay. Lastly, we're going to talk through search. So search is um, very similar to the I don't multitask very well here, so I'm going to do here. And we're going to do a search. So searching works very similar to the SharePoint search. It as it is part of the SharePoint search index, but it is isolated so that the items that are in SharePoint embedded are hidden, if you will. There's a PowerShell command to switch that if you want it in the M365 experience. But a managed property is a managed property. A Full text search is a full text search. And you can see that I've got image PDFs that I was able to do the OCRing on and return those search results. So again, very, very um, controlled. You display what you want to in that user experience. Okay. All righty. So let's back into some of the plumbing on how things were created. So from a, um, uh, let's see here, where did, uh, there we go. All right. So from a SharePoint Admin Center perspective, when you create those containers, you'll notice that you're going to see your containers in the SharePoint Admin Center. There is some functionality that you can use uh, around that. But from the Power Platform perspective, and this is getting in my way. Yep. Uh, now I did it. OK. So now, when we create that Azure container, this is, or the uh, app registration, this is where you're going to assign the appropriate permissions. So that file storage container selected is going to be the one that we're going to grab onto. And then you're going to create that uh, authentication secret. So the secret and the secret value, that is what's going to be used within our solution to authenticate in and uh, make those API calls. So all of that is uh, um, configured within the Azure environment. Once we have that completed, 
on the Power App side or in the, sh the, the Power Platform side, what I did is I created a solution. So the solution has all of the um, components that we need, the environment variables being the important ones here. This is where set your environment variables, use those within your Power Automate to make those calls. That is um, where I've contained those. And as you import the solution into your environment, you'll be prompted for your environment specific things client ID, secret, tenant, and so forth, okay? All right, so from the Power App perspective, nothing more than a few screens. So you will see that, um, that the screens that I had presented earlier, this is where I'm focusing on the entry point and the gallery. So nothing different from a uh, Power Platform perspective. If I wanted to create a container in this case, You'll notice that uh, within the container screen, I've got a bunch of hidden um, uh, containers. Boy, I'm using container a lot, am I? So within Power Platform, containers are holding all of the functionality to do that appropriate CRUD action. So in this case, I'm just toggling them on and off so that depending on what the user selects, create the container, prompt them to input the right information and so forth. But if I go down to, let's take a look at files here really quick. So if I go down to files, then this is where nothing more than a gallery that's feeding the files, but I'm feeding in that collection of information to populate the gallery. And where we're doing that is if we select the container, so the on change event for that dropdown is going to fire and that's where we're making the call out to Power Automate, get my um, files, passing in that container ID. So remember, I can have multiple containers and each container having those 25 million documents. This is where I want to focus on specifically which container do I want to get the results from. I'm going to return that JSON result. We'll take a look at that here in a second. And I'm doing nothing more than walking the JSON tree to extract the appropriate information. Okay. So let's look at that specifically. If I go to here is my Power Automate. So my Power Automate is doing nothing more than going out to that endpoint. So if I look at this endpoint, here's my endpoint that I'm going to. I'm going to drive. So all of that's always going to be the same. This is my container ID. So when I create that new container, that ID is what I'm going to be uh, keeping track of. All I'm doing is getting the items out of that container and expanding all of those fields. What's going to be returned to me is that JSON output. So that is the XML, or I'm sorry, the JSON that we are going to take a look at here in a second. And once I have that response, go to here, right? So this is the response that I'm going to get from SharePoint Embedded. You'll notice that under the value section, this is where I have all of my metadata or property information for the files in that container. Okay? Calling attention to specifically that web URL. So remember I mentioned earlier that all you have to do is click on the hyperlink and it will launch you into that Office experience that one URL will do that. So we decorate that. Let me see if I can get over a little bit further here. Yeah, it's not liking that. So all we need to do is drop that hyperlink into our application. It has all of the goodness to expand that and um, throw us into that Office experience. Okay. So once I return that, that is where I'm simply setting the collection values on that JSON response and populating that in my gallery. I do that over and over and over all over the place because once you're getting that JSON response, all we're doing is parsing it and then populating the appropriate object that is in our screen. Okay. Um, so that is a bit of a nutshell on how that portion works. You'll notice that the endpoints are all going to be published and focused on that 
a file storage or drive or drive items. Those are the main endpoints that we're going to start to focus on. Then passing in that container type. Again, that's the environment variable that you're going to uh, establish once you have created the uh, container within the SharePoint Admin Center. That allows you to create, again, as many containers as you want to, simply making that HTTP call. And in this case, I'm sending that as an endpoint, passing in all of my environment variables so that I can reuse those, manage those in one place. And then when I respond back to the Power App, all I'm doing is including that HTTP response that goes back and allows me to parse that JSON, put it into a collection, put it into an object that's in the Power App so that I can uh, use that going forward. Okay. So again, um, all of the HTTP responses are encapsulated. They're all using the environment variables that we have. And within the Power App itself is where I'm going and using that parse JSON, put that into a table so that I can use that um, other places. When I initially fire the application, that's when I'm going to uh, establish not only some fonts and some uh, spacing and you know just some initial plumbing on how we're going to navigate the menu. But I'm also going and getting a list of those containers. So I'm going to store that as a environment collection using that in a number of different places. If I need to refresh that because I've added a new container, great. But you'll notice again, I'm parsing that JSON, walk in the JSON tree to pull out the information that I need to, and that allows me to populate that information automatically. Okay. So I will pause there. I have not been monitoring the chat window because I don't multitask very well, but if there are thoughts or questions, more than happy to field some of those now. There's quite a lot of long long chats in the uh, in here and super cool, a lot of people excitement on on the things. Uh, can you share uh, one more time on the where is this in GitHub? How do people can can then find this sample and more details yep. on the SharePoint embedded? Yep, I'll put the AKA in the chat window now. Excellent. And aka.msspe-samples, there is a Power Platform fork that you can download the solution and put it into your environment as we saw. 